What's up guys, Toy Bro back again for another look at a San Diego Comic-Con Black Series exclusive. Today we are going to take a look at the Luke and Ray 2-pack. So let's take a look at the packaging and the box it comes in real quick. So it has a uh, plastic slip cover on it that actually has kind of their name and just a little, these little black bars on it. Each side obviously has an image of the respective character. We've got the standard side panel for the Black Series boxes with the, the black bars and the name. And then there's a little write-up of, you know, what happened with Luke and how Ray's after to find him and all that good stuff. You've seen the movie, everybody's seen the movie, you know what happened. So let's pull the slip cover off, set it to the side. And then it's a gatefold box and on the inside we've got our two figures. So we've got Ray and Luke. And honestly, I like this kind of black and silvery gray set up more than I like the current red. I would love it if they changed this. I guess I guess we don't know if this this is maybe a precursor to new packaging or not. I kind of wish it would be. But that's pretty much all there is for the packaging. Gatefold box, pretty much two standard Black Series boxes for the most part, just kind of hinged together. So let's pull them out and take a closer look. All right, so here they are out of the box. And I got to say right off the bat that this is not my most anticipated exclusive from Comic-Con. That still goes to Thrawn. But this is a welcome addition to the lineup of exclusives. I'm really looking forward to kind of digging into these two. And I'm looking forward to their retail releases too. So, you know, it's the figure that we've been waiting for for almost two years. So how could I not be excited for it? There is kind of one big caveat that I'm going to mention right off the bat. So I, I guess I didn't really think about it or notice it in the packaging but Luke obviously is not wearing like standard Jedi robes so he's not wearing something that you know Obi-Wan wears he's not having a full robe with sleeves this is just a cape in the box it is packaged in such a way that he's wearing it but when you take him out he is separate and the cape has to be put on it actually has um, some threads you can see here that are stitched into the lining of the of the cloth of the soft goods and you've got a Set, secure it to him because it really won't stay on him without these threads. Um, just kind of a thing to note. It was kind of a pain in the ass to do it too, um, but it does hang pretty well on him. So I, you know, once it's on, it's kind of nice, and you get it in such a way that you can kind of take it off and put it back on if you want. Just something to note. I um, might be catching some people off guard when you, when or if you pull him out of the box. So we're gonna take a look at Ray first in terms of you know going over the figure, and we'll save Luke for last. All right, so as far as Rey goes, it's it's pretty obvious that she is leaps and bounds ahead of the original one that we got with the first wave of the Force Awakens figures. This is, for now, the best Rey figure we've got. It's unfortunate that we're getting what is really a pretty damn good figure right on the same time we get the news of getting that photo real tech coming with the updated resistance base look for Rey that's coming in early 2018. So we've got this figure to kind of hold us over until then, and she does look pretty good. This is a lot better uh, rendition of Daisy Ridley than what we previously had, but what we're going to be getting is just going to, you know, blow this one out of the water. So, you know, it's kind of the way it goes at this point, but it's, it's just kind of funny that we got this at the same time we got news of an even better one coming. So let's take a look at our at accessories first, just because I've got her loaded with them. So we've got the the Skywalker Saber that we have had a million iterations of at this point. You know what to expect here. We have got her staff. So you kind of know what to expect here as well. King kind of warped in the package just because of how it's kind of plugged in there. You can fix that though. And then she's got her blaster, the one that uh, Han gives her. It's just got some kind of metallic silver paint on it with a black grip. And it fits in her holster. So thankfully, if you really wanted to load her up, you absolutely can because she can hold the saber and the gun if you wanted. The gun can go in the holster and this and the uh, staff can go, well, it can go like that, or it can go over her shoulder and she can have everything all at once. So I like the fact that you don't necessarily have to put stuff back in the box with this one. Now, as far as articulation goes, it's going to be standard Black Series stuff. Head can rotate. Got pretty good down, not too much up because of her hairstyle, the updated hair. Arms go out and all around. There is no bicep swivel. We do have a single joint at the elbow, as is the way it goes for female characters. We have got a hinge, which is a vertical hinge on this hand, and a rotation. There is a side-to-side -side hinge on the other hand, so you can use the hands for different things. This is more apt for guns and sabers. She has torso rotation and a bit of a crunch, not too much. Legs can go out 
pretty far despite the plastic being in the way, but it's very bendy, so it doesn't hinder her too much. About 90 degree kick, and pretty far back. She does have a thigh cut, double joint at the knee, nothing at the boot as usual. And there is a hinge and then a pin facing down forward for uh, rocker action. Right now, as far as the sculpt on this thing goes, I think it's pretty good. I like this new look for Rey. I like it better than her scavenger look. I still prefer the resistance look, and obviously we're getting a figure in that style. But this is a cool new look that we're getting in The Last Jedi, kind of her Jedi in training robes, so to speak. That's what she's uh, wearing as Luke trains her, it seems. So we've got the kind of sculpted... Uh, fabric. I mean, it's really just kind of a sash that she wears over and it crisscrosses all around and ends in this kind of bendy plastic with some kind of under mesh that she wears as a shirt. We've got the pants and the boots with some sculpted line work on them. And then she's got her arm wraps, which are sculpted. And we've got uh, kind of a bracer wrist strap over here. Really where it comes down to it for me is, is the head. And I think that's pretty much true for everybody that wants this figure. This is a better head sculpt all around. It's still not perfect. I will, let me, let me rephrase. The sculpt is probably pretty damn perfect, uh, at least for, for this level of figure. It just comes down to paint, usually, and that's what we're kind of used to. I do like the new hair. I like the that look. It's it's nice. It sculpted well. She's got her kind of uh, ponytail pulled back with some straps in there. So overall, she looks pretty good. I, I, I like this new updated Ray. It, it would have been nice if we had gotten this previously to begin with. As far as her paint goes, where she has it is pretty well applied. Uh, we've obviously got some browns and grays and blacks on the various levels of clothing that she wears, and it looks good. It it, it fits her style. She still looks kind of scavengery to me, so I, I like that. It fits with her. It's kind of a, a mesh of her scavenger and resistance look in, in terms of style and colors, so I like this new design. And then, as, like I said, the issues with the face are pretty much always paint-related on Black Series, and... While this isn't bad, and it certainly looks a lot better than what we got, it's still it's still just not there yet. It's it's definitely not what we're going to be used to in you know a few months once we start getting that amazing new photo real stuff that they're that they're touting. But what we do have is here, here is pretty good. Eyebrows are straight, eyes are forward facing, no derpiness. Lips are pretty good. She just looks kind of expressionless, and that that's really my my problem with this with this face and with this head is she looks kind of expressionless. So there's no real emotion in that face. She's just kind of vacant, staring off into the distance. But at the same time, when you compare it to the older one, you're like, damn, this is pretty good. And here's really the main attraction of this set. Obviously, it's old Jedi Luke. This is a figure that everybody's been wanting for, what, two years? I've been clamoring for this figure for a long time, and I'm glad we finally got him. It was kind of to be expected that we were going to get a first release version at Comic-Con. Anybody that thought otherwise is kind of fooling themselves. So let's take a look at what he's got to offer. Um, like I said, originally he does have the kind of weirdness, maybe not weirdness, but just kind of pain in the ass with the, with the cloak, or you have to kind of tie it onto him to make it stay. But once it's on there, I think it actually, you know, speaking of the soft goods first, I think it stays pretty well, and I like the fact that it kind of hangs nicely. It's it's not it's not perfect, and it's never going to be at this scale. But this is a better better instance of soft goods on a Black Series figure, I think. Especially when you look at the back, look at those folds and how it hangs. It looks pretty good. I, I'm I'm overall pretty pleased. It's all one one shade of kind of the tan uh, fabric, but it works pretty well for him. And then you know we'll just pop it off for the time being. So we've got our Luke here. And overall, I'm I'm pretty pretty pleased with this. I do think that again, it's the same thing I'm going to be saying for a while until we get that photo real tech. It's it's kind of like you know we're just we're seeing this figure, but we know that it could be better and it will be better in the future. But for a first Jedi Luke, I am I'm as pleased as I can be. I think so. Let's take a quick look at him. I mean, he's pretty standard, and what you see is what you get here because he includes no accessories because we still don't know what he's going to have in the movie. You know, so they can't they can't give you any spoilers uh, in toy form here. So head can move side to side. It's got a little bit of up and down. Arms can go out and all around. He has rotation and hinge at the elbow. What do we have at the wrist? We have a side to side hinge and rotation. Torso waist cut. So we can go all around. Same kind of hinge on the other hand. Legs are hindered by the. 
uh, plastic robes. This is similar to how kind of Obi-Wan is. But they can go out because there is a cut, so they can go out a decent bit. And then they go forward 90 degrees, you just have to work with the plastic on this. And then they go back up a decent bit. We've got some thigh cut, double joint at that knee. And then same kind of foot we saw with Ray with the hinge and a forward facing pin for rocker. Now as far as the sculpt goes, I think that in terms of just taking the head out of consideration, the body is pretty nice. It's a, it, you know, it's, it's a very Jedi looking figure. And then we have, which I really think is the star of the show in terms of from the neck down, is that hand, which has a ton of sculpted detail in it. Looks very nice, very robotic. It is kind of gummy, uh, but overall it's really nice. I'm very pleased with how this hand turned out. Uh, he's got his sculpted belt with the buckle and the little pouch. And, uh, spoiler alert maybe, he has a clip for a lightsaber on his belt. I don't know, is anybody expecting him not to? I don't know. He's got these sculpted straps for his boots. And then looking at that head, I think it's pretty good. It's, you know, it, it was kind of worried when I first saw pictures of this. Like, you know, okay, he doesn't look too much like Mark Hamill. And I still think that the hair might be kind of the wrong color. Because he's not 100% gray. But at the same time... For a first look at old Jedi Master Luke, I'm pretty pleased with this. The sculpt looks pretty good. It's still not perfect, and I still think X-Wing Luke is still the best-looking uh, Black Series Luke figure. But this is pretty decent. I'm, I'm overall pleased. There's a lot of sculpted textured detail in that hair, and then in his beard and mustache. So, yeah, I can, I can buy that this is a Mark Hamill figure. Pretty, pretty decent. As far as the paint goes, again, not bad where we have it, because there's really not tons and tons of it on this figure. Uh, it's mostly in the beard and then the, in the eyes and the eyebrows, but it's pretty decent. Not bad. There's no real shading on the face, which might have helped. I imagine some, some customizers are probably going to show us just how good this sculpt really is at some point. And there's not really any paint on the legs. We do have paint on the robe and the belt. So yeah, he's still kind of a basic figure. And at the end of the day, if you really thought you were going to get anything you didn't see at the end of The Force Awakens, you're probably just, you know, kidding yourself in that regard. But this is... The only thing he could have been given, it really is a lightsaber. And since we still don't know what color saber he's going to have, assuming he has one, because they aren't going to give us his staff that we've seen in promo images, because that would technically still be a spoiler, you know, you're pretty much going to get just a figure and the, and the robe. Which I still think, you know, despite the uh, having to do the straps on him, or the, not, well, not really straps, it's just a piece of thread, uh, it hangs really well. And overall, especially if you were going to do, you know, the whole thing where he's just standing looking off, it hangs really well. And he looks, that looks like Mark Hamill standing silently on a cliff to me. So I think despite this, which is just more of an annoyance than anything, it's not a problem. I can see why it's necessary. The soft goods on this guy are pretty good. They hang really well and got a lot of nice folds in there to bring it some, some character and some life. All right, so all said and done, this is a pretty decent set. I like the packaging. I like the slip cover that it comes on. I hope that we're getting uh, black and gray packaging going forward. That would be excellent. And, I, you know, the figures obviously are important too, and I like them both. Luke is a lot better than I was expecting. That face sculpt looks nicer to me than I was expecting it to based off promo pictures that we got. The cloak is nice despite the annoyances with the with the strap. Strap. I keep saying strap. It is a piece of thread that you just have to kind of tie on there just to keep it from falling off of him because it just sits on him. And then Ray, while she's not perfect in that face sculpt, she is still leaps and bounds better than what we've ever gotten before. And she's a good transition piece to the one that we're going to be getting. I like this new look that she's got. And overall, I like all the accessories because she comes loaded with stuff, at least for a Black Series figure. She's got more than most. You know, if you wanted this, I would recommend trying to get a hold of it. I don't know if it's necessarily something you have to open and display because we're getting retail releases, but I had to take a look at these guys now. So that is going to do it for this quick look at the Star Wars Black Series Comic-Con exclusive Luke Skywalker and Rey 2-pack. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, do that whole thing for me down there. Let me know what you think of these two, and until next time.